Now let's go back to the basics, the most elementary question. If the war escalates, who will win? Israel or Iran? Which country has the edge? Is it Israel with its high-tech weapons or is it Iran with its raw numerical advantage? Let's go through all the data and see how they stack up. First, let's look at the overall numbers. Iran is home to almost 92 million people. Israel's population is about a tenth of that at 9.4 million. So you can imagine their military personnel figures reflect this. Iran has 610,000 active troops, 6 lakh 10,000, 350,000 reserve fighters and 220,000 paramilitary personnel. Altogether, that's 1.8, 1.18 million people in the Iranian army. What about Israel? Well, they have 170,000 active duty personnel, 465,000 reservists and 35,000 paramilitary troops, coming to a total of 6,70,000, 670,000. That's a little more than half of Iran's military figures. So Israel seems outmanned. Now we can argue that the numbers do not matter because everyone in Israel is trained to fight. They're all trained fighters. This country has mandatory military service. Almost all Israelis serve in the armed forces for two and a half to three years. Well, here's the thing. Iran has that too, mandatory military service. But in Iran, it's just for the men. But think about the huge population difference between Iran and Israel. It means that Iran has a lot more people who know how to fight or who've been trained on how to fight. So an all-out war would probably favor Iran in terms of sheer manpower. It's the same when we look at tank figures, armored vehicle numbers, stored artillery, mobile rocket projectors. On the ground, it's Iran that comes out on top. And it's the same situation at sea. Israel doesn't really have a noteworthy navy. Look at the numbers. No frigates, no destroyers, no aircraft carriers, and five submarines compared to Iran's 19. Iran's navy isn't great either, but it beats Israel in most parameters. So by the looks of it, Iran has the edge on the ground and the sea. However, those figures probably won't matter much because Tehran won't be launching a naval blockade and a standard land war is not really an option for either side. Let's look at the map, the map of West Asia. You have Israel on one side and the Mediterranean coast. Then you have several countries in between and then comes Iran. Israel is not marching through Jordan and Iraq to invade Iran. That is impractical. And if Iran tries to do this, Israel can just pick the troops off from above. No Iranian convoy or tank column is going to reach Israel. So face-to-face -face fighting probably won't happen. Therefore, manpower doesn't really matter much. Ground and sea superiority won't help either. The real battle here is in the air. And that is where Israel shines. Let's compare. Fighter jets, Israel 241, Iran 186. Dedicated attack craft. Israel 39, Iran 23. Attack helicopters, Israel 48, Iran 13. You get the picture. Israel has far greater numbers in the air and that's not even the deciding factor. It's the quality of the Israeli Air Force that, that really gives it superiority. Iran is flying antiques. Fighter jets from the 60s and the 70s, it acquired these planes before the Iranian revolution of 1979. So Iran has a squadron of old American F-4s and 5s. One squadron of the Russian Su-24s and some other jets here and there. That's what Iran has. On the other side, you have Israel with state-of-the-art F-15s, F-16s and of course F-35 stealth fighters. Iran has no answer to this. A squadron of F-4s from 1960 won't do much to a modern F-35, not unless they get very lucky. So Israel is almost unchallenged in the skies. If a full-scale war breaks out, Israel will depend on this aerial superiority and it will try and lay waste to Iran, like with Gaza and now Lebanon. But it won't be the same. It won't be as easy because Tehran is not without its own pointy ends. Iran knows that it can compete in the skies. It cannot compete in the skies, not in the conventional dogfights or aerial raids. And it has known this for years, which is why it came up with a different plan for the air. Instead of jets and helicopters, Iran relies on missiles and drones. The pride of the pack is the Shahid 136, Iran's best-known kamikaze drone. 
They're relatively cheap to make, they're easy to use, and they can swarm the enemy. Israel has dozens of fighter jets. Iran has hundreds, if not thousands, of drones. When it all comes to aerial bombardment, it will be quality versus quantity. Will Israel be able to take down Iranian drones every day? Not to mention missiles like the Fateh 1 and 2, Iran's indigenous hypersonic missiles. To win an aerial war, Iran needs to shoot down about 240 jets. Israel, however, needs to shoot down dozens of projectiles every single day. It's a tough fight to call. Or it would be if this was a purely military contest, but it's not. With Israel versus Iran, other factors also come into play, like economics. Israel is one of the richest countries in West Asia. Iran has been suffering under sanctions for years. It has 10 times Israel's population, but a lower GDP. And that is sustained due to oil and weapon exports. What happens if Israel blows up Iranian oil refineries or drone factories? What happens to Iran's economy, to the ordinary people of Iran? It's not a situation that Tehran can really afford, especially in the event of a war. So the economy is Israel's trump card. In fact, Israel has an even bigger advantage, something that Iran cannot compete with at all. Israel has the United States. There are normal allies. Iran has those. It is friendly with Russia and China, not bad to have as support. But they won't back Iran the way the Americans will back Israel. If Israel comes under attack, the U.S. will step in. No matter who is right or wrong, no matter who is president of America, if Israel is on the back foot, America will come in all guns blazing. And that may be the deciding factor in this war. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained. Every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.